Corruption. Okay, there okay, is I just, one. Wait, wait, let me just. Hint, hint. Okay, well, let me I'll intercede. Yeah, I'll, I'll let me I'll tell you. I went me, there for five excuse years. Excuse me, I'll come, I'll come back. Can no. we come it, back to it? Again, in talking about the PA, it's not a textbook case of you have to create institutions and so forth. A government doesn't just have institutions. A government also has territory to rule. Otherwise, it's not really a government, right? The, 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 the territory that the PA ruled was, as you know, it's 18% of the West Bank in bits and pieces. That's not a country. You can call it whatever you want. It's not a country. It'll never be a country. That's the point. All right, I'm going to take a question from the gentleman in the third row there, in the red tie. A uh, question to Hind Khoury. Uh, you said that Palestinians are united against uh, Israeli occupation, but we all know how dire the situation in Gaza is right now, uh, with reports suggesting that the living standards are worse in over 40 years. Uh, then how do you explain the presence of luxurious uh, villas in Gaza that belong to PA members? Do, does the uh, resident of Gaza who struggles for food every day and the well-off PA member really do share a common enemy? Can I ask where you're from? Yes. I'm Palestinian. <laughs> Uh, listen, uh, Palestinian is, is not exactly the third world. Believe me, there are many families who worked abroad and have been very successful. They brought back their capital to invest in their own country. Cities have been built that way in with the West Bank as well as in Gaza. I mean, this is not necessarily corruption money. There, there are cases, I don't deny it, and the corruption has been disclosed by the Legislative Council in 1998 and they have asked that there are investigations to be done and to stop the corruption. So, you know, Palestine is not about truly we have refugee camps and people live under very, very difficult conditions, but people also wanted to hold on to refugee camps. They held on to their keys because they want to hold on to their right of return. Let me just ask you one question. How many people went to prison because of corruption? How many people were put on trial because of corruption? By the way, we cannot keep blaming others on our problems. Israelis are occupying us. We are occupied. They have draconian measures which they inflict on us every day. But this does not give a green light for people to indulge into, in corruption. We, See, this is a very serious control, problem. We don't control the territories. It's Israel that controls the territories. I mean, if, if How is the that related to corruption? Forces... People taking commissions. Pe 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 people who are coming to invest in the Palestinian territories, the officials are becoming their partners. How, how is that related to, how is that related to occupation? I want, to, I want to hear the view of the questioner. He's heard quite a bit from both sides. I want to hear what he thinks. If I was a resident of Gaza and I didn't have enough money to feed my family, uh, and when I, if, if I looked at this PA member who's, who's really well off and the occupation seems not to affect him at all, who sends his children abroad to study, who has all the money he needs, all the means uh, uh, of living that he needs, then I would consider him to be my enemy. At the same time, if I was a no. PA member and uh, I was attacked by, uh, by some Hamas militias or something like that, I would also consider them to be my enemy. So yeah. you, can't, you, can't make, you can't make it so simple. You can't just say that... Uh, because Palestinians are in occupation, uh, the common enemy is Israel. That's not how it works out. No, I mean, and these are, as, as Sari said, there are a minority, a very small minority of people who were in government and who are corrupt. I'm not denying that. But it is such a small minority. There are still people who are responsible people. There are people who are patriotic. All right, it's I'm going to... It's not gonna, fair I'm, to describe okay, all Palestinians I'm as I'm going to move on to a question in the third row. You have your hand up. Uh, my question goes out to the opposition. Uh, don't you think that if Palestine ga gained its independence today, then they are at risk of a civil war between each other for power struggle, Hamas and Fatah or any other groups that might be involved? I mean, seriously, how are we ever going to have any weight and peace negotiations with Israel when we are demanding of things and doing the exact opposite in real life? You say we. Are you a Palestinian? No, sir. I'm Syrian. Mm -hmm. We, the, the, this is, I tried to say this a little bit in my introductory comments. The point is that the demand for a state will not solve the Palestinians' problems. The Palestinians' problems began with dispossession in 1948. The problem will only end when that dispossession is ended. That's the point. Let's look at the polls, at least in the occupied territories in East Jerusalem, that said that Palestinians are ready to accept the state, even under very dire circumstances, up to 70, 80 percent of the population. So I think if we do have a state and we have independence, can you imagine me, I live there, if tomorrow the occupation were to go away and the wall was to be destroyed and there would be no checkpoints, 
I'm sure. I mean, you know, we will be building. We already have institutions. Suddenly, we have everybody an would be honest. Would they? No, listen. I'm not saying it's going to be an ideal world. There will be struggle for power, like there is in the rest of the world. We're also normal, but there are also civil society has always been active. We do have institutions. We do have capacities. We will put an act together. And already, me, actually, there is a lot the of work of that was done on the rule of law lately okay. and institutions. Do you want to come back on that? Yeah. What I'm trying to say is. Basically, we, the problem is with, within the Palestinian population in itself, the education of the people and in terms of how they should approach politics. Because us, we're, unfortunately, uh, double standards is very common, especially in our government and in our politics. So really, if we do not eliminate that issue first, then how are we ever going to ch achieve anything so, else? I want to move on, actually, and I just want to remind everybody of the motion this House believes that Palestinians risk becoming their own worst enemy. Gentlemen in the fourth row there, please. My question is, how can you expect a government